allowing me to even um, come into the Lord's house that you shepherd. And I uh, just want to thank you guys for having open ears and an open heart to what the Lord has to say. So thank you. I just want to honor you and your beautiful wife back there for just creating the space. Other than that, I would like to start um, in prayer before we get into the word of the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, you know why we are all gathered here. We are all gathered in your name for your word. Father God, we don't want to hear what I have to say or any opinions or thoughts. We just want your truth, your revelation, Father, your power, your anointing, Father God, and just your backing to deliver this exactly how you want it to be released. Nothing added, nothing taken away. God, I just ask that you would bless this house, Father God. I pray that you would open their ears, open their hearts to receive everything that you have, Father God. I pray that you bless us with the spirit of revelation and truth, Father God, and boldness, so that after we receive your word, we are empowered and ready to do the work in which way you want it to be done that goes specifically to each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Father, we give you all the honor all the glory and all the praises for you are the only god we shall worship we shall praise and we shall acknowledge father god i just cancel any assignments by the enemy that would try to come against your will mm -hmm. and i pray father god that you would open up the heavens and release your angels into the atmosphere to move and do the work that you plan for today mm -hmm. father we thank you again we honor you and we acknowledge you and we are only here for you so Please come into this place. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Mm -hmm. Make our hearts hungry for you again. Mm -hmm. Give us eyes to see you again in your purest forms mm -hmm. and ears to know your voice. Without mm -hmm. doubt, without question, Holy Spirit, have your way. This is all for you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. So the word the Lord gave me, this is actually called Recount the Cause. So I know a lot of us are already here today because we've already said our yes. But the question is, have you been misaligned during the process? So the question here today is always going to be, God, are you happy with my decisions and what it is that I'm doing? And am I honoring you in what I do? And so the goal is to not move as people would think because our way is not God's way. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. He is way above us. He is way higher than us. So the thing is we always want to be humble enough to ask our Father, is this what you want? Mm -hmm. And so we're just going to go through scriptures that he has given me, and he shall speak as he feels, okay? And so can everybody turn to Luke chapter 14? And we are going to be jumping around, but I will... <laughs> <laughs> Tell you guys. So give me an amen when you guys are there. Luke 14. And then we're going to start on 25, verses 25, or verse 25. We ready? So, starting on 25, it says, Now large crowds were going along with him, and he turned and said to them, and that's something we want to highlight, is that it's large crowds going to Jesus Christ, and this is what he wanted the masses to know. So this is important in what he is saying. And then we're going to skip down to 27, and it says, Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who observe it begin to ridicule him, saying, This man begun to build and was not able to finish it. And so... Let me go into my notes. So after he had given me that, he took me to Hosea 6 and 6. And this says, For I delight in loyalty rather than sacrifice. 
So this message is going to be, are you loyal to God? Because that is what he wants, is loyalty. He is faithful. Even faithfulness is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. And that is something that God wants to know. Are you willing to chase after him? No matter the cost, no matter what happens, whatever it is that you may lose, are you willing to do it for the Lord? Because when you're willing to give up your possessions for him, you gain deeper wisdom, knowledge, and riches, and a steadfast spirit that is able to finish the race strong, finish the race with a pure heart after him. And so then, he had me look up what is loyal. And so I went to Bible Hub, and this is what it says, faithful to law. And then when, he, when I had read that, he had said to me, his Bible is this law. The Bible is the word of God. And so being faithful to the Bible and what it is that he says. Then it says, upholding the law of rule. And he's talking about his word. And then authority, the power. And then he said, the right to give order. So what it is that he is asking you to do, upholding it and following what it is that his word says. And then it says, faithful and true to the lawful government. Then he took me to Isaiah 9 and 6. It says, for a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And I thought it was amazing, because as soon as I came in here, I noticed that's what you have on your wall. Everlasting Father, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. I said, God, if you're not confirming this word, <laughs> then I don't know what, right? And so then after that, he had me look up government. And it says, the system to govern a state or community. And he said, his people, Israel. Okay, and that is who he is talking to. Then he highlighted to me unity, the state of being united or joined as a whole. Then it says, faithful to the allegiance, and he says, hold on, faithful to the prince or sovereign, to whom on is, for who, and maybe that's on, forgive me, you guys, my handwriting's a little, you know, <laughs> is subject, unwavering in allegiance, and then allegiance is loyal commitment of a subordinate to a superior of, or of an individual to a group or cause and so he is calling us his church he's calling us his people to take his word seriously to eat the scriptures to meditate on the scriptures to know it as much as we want to eat food for our body are we eating the food for our soul for our spirit are we going and eating the word? Ezekiel says, it is good, it is sweet like honey. And that is what this word has to be as the body of Christ. Or when trials and tribulations and things come, we might just put down our cross and go back to what was comfortable, which is the past, which is what we came from, what he delivered us from, because we don't want to do the work. So in picking up the cross, we have to carry whatever it is that he's asking us to carry for his glory because his glory comes with a cost. And we have to prove ourselves faithful to even carry what it is that he's giving us. We have to be good stewards of what it is that he is entrusting us with. And he entrusts each and every one of us with something. But it's our due diligence to take what he gave us and to use it for his glory. And so then he had me look at the second meaning. And it said, true to any person or persons to whom one owes fidelity. And fidelity means faithfulness. And he says, especially as a wife to her husband. Then it says, lover to each other. And he's talking about the bride of Christ. Because God is our husband, and we are his wife. And I thought, like, God, you're not playing, because he says, especially a wife to her husband, meaning us, especially us, 
to him. Because he is faithful. He's holy. There's no wrong he can do. The Holy Spirit cannot think of corruptness or do wicked things. It's not in his nature. So God is naturally going to love us. He's naturally going to pour into us. He's naturally going to be there. But the question is, as his wife, are you willing to be loyal to him? And so now, if you guys want to follow me, we're going to go to Ephesians 5 and starting at 23. I'll give you guys a second to get there. Yes. Ephesians 5, 23. You there? Yes. All right. Perfect, perfect. So it says, For the husband... Christ is the head of the wife, meaning us. He is our leader. We are to follow him. Okay? Mm -hmm. So for the husband, Christ is the head of the wife. Even though we know he's talking about, you know, humans. But he wanted to use this to give us a coordinate, a coordination. What am I trying to say? Correlation. Thank you, God. <laughs> to what it is to follow him. Okay? <coughs> and so it says, for the husband is the head of the wife, and then he said his bride, as Christ also is the head of the church, which is also us, right? He himself being the savior of the body, but, but as the church, and he says us, is subject to Christ, so the wives, so the wives ought to be their husbands, uh, maybe it meant much obey their husbands, let's see what it has. I missed the word, you guys. Bear with me. Okay, thank you, Lord. Okay, so here we go. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Where did he take me? Okay. And then it says, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. This is the word of God. Washing ourselves in the word of God. The scripture says that we are to renew our mind daily. We have the mind of Christ, but you cannot have Christ without his word. We only have the Bible because of Christ. So there's no separation. Okay? And so then to 27, that he might pre uh, present to himself. And notice, you guys, he might present to himself. This is God. So Jesus might present himself, the church, in all her glory. And you guys, he's talking about us. He wants to show us off. He wants to bring us to our highest. But we must first be submitted to him and obedient to him and his commands. So then it says, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. Holy and blameless. This is what he wants for us because to God, purity matters. Purity matters. And so then he took me to, oh, well, I'll just say. So even in 2 Cor uh, what is it? Corinthians 11 and 2, Paul says to the people, For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I betrayed in you to one husband, so that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin, as a pure virgin. And what does that mean? God had me look up here. So not yet touched, spotless, right? Without wrinkles. You have not been contaminated. The world hasn't gotten a grip on you. It hasn't tr like transformed you. It hasn't caused you to do wicked or corrupted things. Untouched, pure being pure unto the Lord. Then it says, used or exploited. Then he had me look it up in a virgin in um, the strong concordance. And this is what it says. 
So it says, believers, well, this is the part he had shown me. Believers, when they are pure, and then it says, faithful to Christ, their heavenly bridegroom. Isn't that amazing how everything flows together? He's calling us to be his bride, pure, refined, sanctified, righteous and holy, and unto him, not serving other gods, lowercase g God, not dibbing and dabbling with other things or, you know, having idolatry issues. This is about making God the one and only God. The only one you bow down to, the only one you worship, the only one you praise. Mm -hmm. This is about being pure and set aside for God. Because God doesn't like nobody cheating. Mm -hmm. Just like husbands and wives, you wouldn't want your partner to cheat. God wants the same loyalty and faithfulness. Because you can get away with things for so long, cheating on your spouse. But God knows your heart. And God is a God who is living. He feels what it is that you feel. His heart breaks. He gets angry. God has emotion. The scripture even says he yearns for us. He yearns for us. He loves us and he wants us to himself. So then after that, he took me to, so I went on to three. We're still in 2 Corinthians 11. So then it says, but I am afraid that as the serpent, and the Lord said devil, deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. Then he had me look up devotion, and it means love, loyalty, or enthusiasm. enthusiasm. And then it says strong excitement, and active interest and this is for a person activity or case god wants you to be excited to love him he wants you to be interested in him he doesn't want to have to beg you to love him beg you to come to him beg you to trust him he wants you to naturally love him be interested pick up his word because you're like god i want to spend time with you today I want to know what you have for me. I want to know what it is you're doing in the earth because we're his people. God is such a good God. He does not confuse us. He only confuses his enemies. But God always lets us know before something happens because he wants his church. He wants his bride ready. But how can he share with you if you're not pure in heart? Because now he would have to judge you because of the fact that he told you and you disobeyed him. But wouldn't you love it if somebody naturally wanted to be, you know, know about you, what makes you happy, what do you like to eat, what do you like to do, and then they take you out to do those things? Wouldn't it make you feel loved? Like, oh, they listened. Oh, they really care about me. Oh, this person, they're so sweet. They could have been doing anything they wanted in the world, but they chose to call and check up on me. They wanted to take me out. They wanted to give me a gift for my birthday. God wants the same. He wants your time. He wants your devotion. He wants your love. And he wants you to be his bride. But you must be pure. No gossiping, no slandering, no having these times where you indulge of things that are of the world, especially when he delivered you. To go back to the world isn't only to betray God, but to betray yourself because you will be forfeiting all that it is that he has for you. And what do we know from Jeremiah? Before we were put in the womb of our mother, he's already had plans for us. Right? Jeremiah 29, 11, what is it? Plans of welfare? Right? Not of calamity? God wants you to be the best you. Why? Because then other people want to know the God you serve. Other people are going to praise him because of what he's doing through you. God wants the best for you, but are you willing to put in the work and meet him there? so that he can do the work in you through the Holy Spirit. But it takes a willing heart, a pure heart, and a heart that's hungry for him. And so now,
you guys want to follow me and go to Revelations 14 and 4. Everybody there now? All right. So we're starting on four. And it says, These are the ones who have not been defiled with women, for they have kept themselves chaste. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. <laughs> you follow Him wherever He goes. These have been purchased. Come on. From among men as first fruits to God and to the Lamb, and no lie was found in their mouth. They are blameless. Are we seeing the pattern here and what God is trying to say? We are to be faithful and pure. Faithful and pure. And you guys, this is so powerful because when I even read um, in 4, and then if you scroll down, he says, these have been purchased. You guys, we have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. He says, from among men, as first fruits to God and to the Lamb, and no lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. They are set aside for God. These are people who are choosing to do the right things even when you have the ability to do the wrong things. This is making the conscious decision to seek God anyways, right? Because he says, follow him wherever he goes. How many people are hungry enough to follow God wherever he goes? Wherever he goes, not saying, oh, God, send me. And then he says, okay, I'm going to use you across the country. And then you're like, no, God, I can't go. But you said, yes, God, I'll go. But are you really faithful? Are you really committed? Are you really loyal to follow God wherever he goes, even if it is in the dark places? If you are the light, then you're there to do the changing. You are there so he can flow through you. You are there to be a torch to light up others around you. You know, Jesus never hung out with sinners. He visited sinners to save them. But you never see Jesus going back to the same sinner to go have lunch with them. He was always on an assignment, faithful to do whatever God asked. Why? Because he was loyal. It says Jesus Christ was faithful unto death. Unto death. Even when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and was on his knees and in blood, saying, God, take this cup from me. What else did he say? Nevertheless, your will, not mine. And then let's talk about it. Jesus says, I could have a legion of angels come. And get y'all, right? Beat you up, right? Tear this place up. He says, I have backing, right? But he was faithful unto God. Whatever the cost, whatever the price, whatever you need, God, I will go wherever you go. And because of his faithfulness and his loyalty, he was able to, to work and move in great power given by the Holy Ghost. Why do you think he went to the wilderness, huh? To defeat what was getting ready to go. Do you know until he was set aside, right in the wilderness by himself, being consecrated, fasting and praying, he was not able to go out into the world and be moved and used by the world and create disciples in such a way that it would be everlasting even after he was left that they themselves would continue to make them if he did not go to the secret place 40 days 40 nights just him and God just him and God just him and God he wasn't calling nobody hey what do you think about this oh the devil's coming to see me no he stood in his authority 
because he knew who he was. Because when he was baptized, right, it says the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. And he said, this is my son, right, my beloved, and whom I'm pleased with. So he already told him his identity. He announced it to the world. That's why warfare happens. Because when God announces you, heaven knows. And now they know because God spoke it. So now what? They're on an assignment to cancel what it is God needs you to do. But because Jesus knew who he was, he was already starting his days in prayer. He was already being moved and used because he put God first. Right? Didn't he say, I do this so that it glorify my Father? Are you picking up your cross, following your Father wherever he asks you to go? Are you willing to make that kind of sacrifice unto death? Because the Lord says you are either hot or cold. I will spit you out if you're in between. God is a pick me. Either it's me or it's not. But I don't want nothing less than it's me. Okay, you guys. So now let's go to, let's see, Revelation. So we read all of that. And so now we're going to go to Revelation 19 and 7. So now, this says, let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him. Give the glory to God. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Have you made yourself ready? If you've been married, then you know it's a process, right? You guys go, you get all of the things for, you know, the wedding day, the flower, you find the pastor, right? You guys go through all this, pick the bridesmaids, right? Pick the, the ones that the groom be picking, I forget what they call it. Anyway, and then they go and they do the process. They pick out the food, they pick out the dress, they pick out the tuxedo and the color. They're making themselves ready. They're calling all their friends because they want their friends to celebrate them on this beautiful day. Are you making yourself ready? Because it's not just you get proposed to and you're married the next day, right? So when God calls you, you get ready for the marriage. You get, ma you get ready for the marriage. When you are called and you say, yes, now it's time to get ready. Right? When you're in the dating season, you're like, oh, I want him to marry me. Or vice versa, you start doing things to woo the person. Because you want them to want you. You want them to put a ring on your finger. That's what you want. Right? You want to be picked. But God is so good that he picks you. Mm -hmm. Even in your mess, because he has that kind of love, right? Mm -hmm. Mercy's new every day, everlasting. Right? That's what he does. And then he cleans you up. As you listen, he continues to show you more and more. That's what Jeremiah 29, 11 is. Well, Jeremiah 33 and 3, right? Call on my name, right? I will answer. I'll show you great and mighty things. But you don't just tell your secrets to anybody. You tell them to your close friends. So the question is, are you making yourself ready? And then we're going to go to 8. It was given to her, and he said his bride, us, to close herself in fine linen. Close herself, meaning you got to put it on. God can give it to you, but you got to put it on. You got to wear it. Then it says, bright. And then he said, it is in, let's see. So the light is him. The light is in, how do we say light and the light is coming? Let God be God, right? Every man be a liar. Come on, Jesus. And so then it says bright and clean, meaning you look like him and you're clean, right? Because Jesus is the light, the light of the world. 
Isn't that what, even in the beginning, and it says light, and light is capital I, because he's talking of him. Light. And then it says, for the fine linen is the righteousness. But pay attention to this. Is the righteousness acts. Acts. This is what you're doing. A-C-T-S. Of the saints. This means you got to do the work. Okay? Cleaning yourself up. Getting yourself ready for the Lord. <coughs> then he said to me, write. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then we're going to go to 11. It says, so it calls Jesus faithful, it calls him true, and it says in his righteousness. Right? And so, these are the things that are reflective of him. He's true. Right? Isn't that what he's asking us to be? Faithful? Isn't that what he was saying? And then righteousness. We are reflecting who he is. And that's what he expects us to look like. Him. Cleaning yourself up. Doing the work. You get up, you go to work every morning, don't you? You do the work. You drive there. You don't just show up, teleport. You do the work to get there. You do the work to keep the job. Well, do the work to keep the job, the job that Jesus gave you. Because let me tell you, if you don't do it, he'll find another. He will find another to complete it because his sheep need saving. God cares about souls, not accolades. He doesn't care what you can do if it's not done for him. If you're not obedient to his word, it means nothing because now you're doing the work of Satan. Right? He says if you're not gathering, you are scattering. And so then, he took me to 1 Corinthians 9, 23. And this is Paul. He said, I'll give you guys a second. Can you guys say, oh, it's like you're turning. Alrighty. I do all things for the sake of the gospel. Did you hear that? I do all things. Does it sound like Paul's willing to follow him wherever he goes? He does all things, right? For the sake of the gospel, so that I may become a fellow partaker of it. Do you not know that those who run in a race are those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the game exercise self-control. Self-control, that's also a fruit of the Spirit. Meaning you got to be disciplined. You got to stick to it. You have to make up your mind and commit to it. Cutting out what you need to. It says self-discipline or self-control, right? And so... Everyone who competes in the game exercises self-control in all things. Then do, it says, they then do it to receive a perishable, meaning this isn't even going to last, get a trophy. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's not going to last. Right? Then it says, let me find it. But we an imperishable. Meaning, running the race for God, this matters. This is written for eternity. This is what's going to get you to the end. This is everlasting. Because when we die, there's still an eternity. Either you're going to heaven to be with your father, or you're going to hell to be with your father. We get to pick who our father is. Because God has a lifestyle. God has an image. 
God has standards like companies do. If you go to Target, they have a certain thing that they they look like. Go to a bank, they have you can differentiate what bank is what, right? Because they have an image. Let there be light. <laughs> and so Satan also has an image. And he also looks a certain way. So who do you look like? Because God says he's pure, he's holy, he's righteous. He can't be nothing other than that. And so then Paul goes on to say, Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim. And then God says, marriage to the lamb. And then it says, I box in such a way as not beating air. Meaning he's not doing things without thought. He has disciplined himself to be focused to complete the race. The race to get to heaven. Right? And then 27. But I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others. Listen to this. I myself will not be disqualified. Meaning you can be preaching the word of God, but your heart is far from him. Isn't that what he says? So Paul is saying, I preach to others, but I also make sure I'm following God as well. That I'm not just pouring into you, but that I'm also being in the presence of God, laid out, reading his word in his presence, crying to him, worshiping him. He's my best friend. You know? He's saying so he's not disqualified. And we know Paul's done a lot of things. But he's saying I also have to practice what I preach. Okay? And then it goes on and says, so 11, chapter 11 and verse 3. But I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man. Why? Because every knee will bow. Every knee will praise the Lord. Whether you serve him or not on judgment day, you will bow to your creator. Whether you serve him or not, don't matter. You thought you were doing the right thing. When you were doing your own thing, following your flesh, your desires, you thought because it made sense to you. Didn't the Lord say that we are wicked? Our hearts are deceitful. Every man, they do what is right in their sight. Isn't that what Israel was doing in the Old Testament? What they thought was right? But didn't God turn his face? We're not to follow what we think we know. We are to follow what it is he said. And he also says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And so... We are coming to a close, but Matthew 16 and 23. I'm putting you guys to work today, huh? All the scriptures. <laughs> Matthew 16 and 23. Verse 26? Mm-hmm. In chapter 16. And so it says, but he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but man. (laughs) Your flesh is your interest. That's why the Bible says we are to walk in the spirit. One thing God told me is the flesh is the devil. The spirit is God. And you can read this in Galatians. They go through it. Colossians, they go through it. So if you follow after your flesh and your desires, you are following the plan Satan has for you because Satan has a plan for all of us. But so does God. And his... His plans are better than you could ever imagine. Your 
answered prayer as a no is still the biggest blessing you've received. How many times have we asked God for something and knowing from hindsight if he would have gave us that, it would have cost us our real life. It would have put us in the grave. It would have jeopardized our destiny. It would have realigned us outside of his will. You are to follow after God. For he knows the gifts he given you, the plans he has for you, and he is faithful to complete it. He is faithful to get you there, but it takes your cooperation. It takes a continual yes, not a one day, because then when you get in the face and it's not what you thought, but God said, I will be with you wherever you go, right? I will open doors no man can shut and shut doors no man can open. Man is not our God. God is our God. God opens doors that won't cost you your integrity, your morals, your value, your purity. If you do it right, all oh, the things he'll do for you. Because now you look like him. It is his pleasure to pour into you. It is his pleasure to do for you. He is a father. And if you have kids, you know it's your pleasure to give your kids gifts. To see the smile on their face. How much more is that to God when you choose him over and over and over again? How would it feel if you got married and then you choose this person and they stop choosing you? They stop loving you. They stop wanting you. That would break your heart. Dedication, commitment, choosing God over and over and over again, no matter the cost, no matter the price. Wherever you go, Jesus, I'll go. I'll go. Moses, right? What did he say? God, I'll go if you're going. But if you're not going to be there, I'm not going. We have to be willing to give up what our flesh wants so that God can use us in ways. No eye has seen, no ears has heard, neither has it entered the heart of man. What the Lord will do for you, if you love him, if you commit your ways to him, he will lead you and guide you. He will tear the saw down in your position to rise up David. Can God not rearrange the stars if he wanted to? Could he not make the moon stand forever? Isn't that what he did for Joshua one day? The moon never went down. Is he not God? Is the Bible lies? Do you believe it? Because there's no half here, half there. It's either you believe him or you don't. Either you'll follow him or you won't. But the decision is yours. Are you willing to commit yourself again? Are you willing to count the cost and say, yes, God? Are you willing to repent? God, I made a mistake. I went the wrong course. God is kind and loving in his grace. He's not like people when you come back, make fun of you, talk down on you, say, oh, I knew this would never happen. Oh, you this, oh, you that. No, that's the devil. He is the accuser of the brethren. Jesus is great. I'm happy you did that. That was on purpose because I'm going to clean you up and use you for my glory. Because he's the kind of God who rearranges things. Doesn't he say in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, forget the former thing. Do not recall it. He's saying it's already gone, right? As far as the east is from the west. What? Then he says, do you not perceive that I'm doing a new thing? He don't care about the old thing because now whatever you've been through, all the bad, all the ugly, just built your resume. Now you get to go back to those people. You're not just called because of this, you're called for this because you went through it and overcame by the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony. Because that's the kind of God we serve. 
There's nothing he can't fix, nothing he can't rearrange, nothing he can't work out for him. Because he is the redeemer of Israel. He is the holy one. He is Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Jehovah, Lord, God of God, kings of all kings, mm -hmm. Lord of lords. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jehovah Nisi, he will rebrand you. It's nothing. And then he'll give you glory. Because you've been faithful and you steward well. And when the devil came to you trying to convince you and get you to do things, you won't do it. Mm -hmm. One thing Samuel got to say to the people, did I not get bribed? Like, did I not do bribes? He was an honest man. Nobody could get him to switch and be crooked. What about Jesus in the wilderness? How many times the devil came for him, promising him all these things? And Jesus is like, you are to worship me, your God, right? Jesus said, mm -mm. why? Because he already knew what he was called to. He already knew who he was. His father already announced him. And so he was faithful unto death. God chose Jesus. Why? Because he knew Jesus wouldn't trade his sheep. He knew Jesus wouldn't come into interactions with Satan and then betray the people. He didn't pick a human. God says, I love you so much and I want you now. I'm sending Jesus, who is me in the flesh. Because Satan's not taking my children from me again. I'm the man for the job. I'm going to come get my children out the slaughterhouse. I'm not going to turn my back. I'm going to come down and get you myself. That's love. That's love. How many times somebody told you they were going to do something and did it? Now imagine them being your savior. You would have been forgotten about, traded in a long time ago. But God loves you so much. That he says, I got to do it myself. And let's talk about who he is. It says his throne is in heaven and the earth is his footstool. He's coming for us. The one who knows all things he's coming for. Us. The one who doesn't even have to get up and move. He could have spoke the word. Do we know who we're talking about? Sovereign. Holy. Supreme, do we know who we're talking about? He said he's coming in the flesh of a virgin, a pure woman. Can God give you a gift and trust you to keep it pure? Can he trust you to give birth to his pure seed and his plans and promises, or will it get Dirty, because now you're trading it in because you want to move faster in the calling that you have for yourself. Or can he trust you and impregnate you with the promises, the gift, the word, what he desires for you? Can he trust you to take care of it and keep it pure? Huh? Can he trust you to give it to him again? Because he gives gifts without repentance. He says it's yours. But will you serve Satan with your gifts? Or will you give it to him? It's about purity. Going back to purity. Repenting because we're human. We fall. If somebody does you wrong, you want a sorry. Why doesn't God deserve a sorry? As much as he does, as much as he lets fly, why doesn't he deserve your sorry? God I don't know what I'm doing. I need you to show me. I need you to tell me. God, this is what I was born with. My mom was like this. My dad was like this. This is my environment. It's all I know. Be real. He's your friend. He wants you to know his voice. He wants you to know who he is. He wants to be your friend. Like he was with Abraham. Oh, how blessed. Oh, how blessed are the people who get to see God, hear God, know God, want God. How blessed 
are the hungry and the thirsty for him. There's nothing he won't do for his children. Absolutely nothing. Read the Bible. Does he not break protocol for his children? Joshua didn't have to fight his fight. God held down brimstone. There's nothing he won't do. But you got to trust him. You got to love him. You got to want him. And so now let's continue. 24. Then Jesus said to his disciple, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? And your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotion. In other words, it is what you think, what you do, and how you feel. And Jesus is saying, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his mind, loses his will, and loses his emotion? Because whoever you serve controls your mind, your will, and your emotion. And in closing, he took me to Acts 5 and 29. And I'm going to let you go there because... We can't forget this one. Acts 5 and 29. Give me an amen when you get there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. And this is how we're closing. And I want you to never, ever, ever forget this one. Mm -hmm. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the word that you've given us. For we know, Father God, that you reveal to redeem us. You reveal to redeem us because you love us. Because our souls matter to you. Where we end up matters to you. More than how much we care for ourselves. Oh, Father God, how blessed we are. How lucky we are to know you. To love you. To see you. To feel you. To be around you. Oh, God. How blessed we are to know your name. How blessed we are to call on your name. How blessed we are to be your children. Father God, we thank you that you are Alpha and Omega. And because you are the beginning and the end, nothing catches you by surprise. You allow escape for every season, for every wrong turn, for every misalignment. You always are ready with open arms to receive us just as filthy and messy as we are. You're not too high and mighty that you don't come for yours, but you're so high and mighty that you love and honor yours. And Father God, we give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. We thank you, Father God, for speaking with us, making time for us as we prepare to come and be with you. Father God, I just ask that you would bless everybody in this room, oh God. I pray that you would open their eyes, taking the scales off of their eyes, calluses on any parts of their heart that would have resistance towards what you need them to do. Bring it to their mind, oh God. Bring it to their mind, oh God, so that they may get it right, so Satan won't blindside them and cause suffering that you've never intended. May they know that this is your mercy. May they know that you visited them. May they know that you are even going home with them. In the middle of the night, may they know they're never alone or ever forgotten. May they know that they're in your hands and there's nowhere you won't go to get them. Father God, I just pray that you would break every chain off of their lives anywhere that 
Satan has been trapped up and messed up, Father God. I pray that you would loose them, Father God, and I pray that whatever is attacking them, Father God, I pray that you would send your high-ranking born angels into their places to free them, Father God, like you did for Peter who was in jail for preaching your word. Oh God, oh God, break them out of their own imprisonment and break them out of the prisons that they have placed them in. May you use them for your glory. May you stir up their hunger for purity and to be your bride and to be yours and only yours, to be yours, what a wonderful thing it is to be yours and yours alone. Because you're trustworthy, oh God. You're faithful, oh God. You're the same God, the same. You don't change and switch up on us. You don't talk bad about us. You will keep our secrets, your secrets, as long as we come to you with them and ask you to do surgery on us again. Oh, Father God, help us to know that you are not our enemy, but you are our friend, you are our lovers, you are our husband. And may we be people who are submitted. May we be people who, Father, let you lead and guide us. May we be people who don't want control, but give you access to be our Lord, to be our Savior, to lead us, to guide us. May we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. Oh God, stir up our hearts again. Revive us again. Put us on fire again. Mm -hmm. Father God, I ask that you would baptize us mm -hmm. in the spirit of boldness to go out wherever you send us. Spirit of revelation to always be able to speak in your truth. Father God, I pray that you bless us with the spirit of truth, and I rebuke the spirit of error. Mm -hmm. I rebuke any lying spirit that has manipulated us, caused us to go astray, astray or get out of your will, Father God. I pray that you deal with the enemy who have come for our soul, mm -hmm. who have come for their children, who have come for their household. Oh, Father God, I pray that you would invade their space, invade their mind, body, soul, and spirit. And I pray that you would put a desire in them and increase, Father God, for them to love you with all their mind, body, soul, and spirit and strength. May they choose you over and over and over again. And may they see you. And may they see that you're putting in effort. May they see the new work that you're doing. May they know that you are transitioning them and repositioning them and taking them into greater waters with you. Mm -hmm. Father God, I just thank you again mm -hmm. for loving us, for being patient, mm -hmm. but also stern and correcting us. Mm -hmm. May we take chastisement from you and love. Mm -hmm. May we not run and hide like we've done something wrong, but say I'm so glad that I can talk to somebody who genuinely loves me. Mm -hmm. Genuinely wants to change me and see me be my best. Father God, I pray that we would put you back on your throne. And Father God, I pray that anywhere that we've been in error, and anywhere that we need to repent, that we would come back to your throne humbly. As you said, Father God, in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, those who are called by my name, if they humble themselves, seek my face and pray, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from my Father. I will forgive you, and I will heal your land. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, let us not forget that we are children first, and you are a master. Mm -hmm. You are a master. Mm -hmm. Enslave us, make us your bond servant, mm -hmm. and help us to finish mm -hmm. the race. God, I pray the word that you've spoken, I pray that it pierces their heart. Mm -hmm. I pray that the enemy doesn't get to dig in and steal and snatch up the seeds. Mm -hmm. But I pray, Father God, that, that the word has landed on, Father, good soil. Mm -hmm. And I pray because, God, this is your word. You said one plants a seed, one waters, but you increase it. Mm -hmm. So, Father, I ask that you seal it with the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus. I pray that they would have peace the rest of this day. I pray that nothing would get in the way. Father God, I pray against any demonic attack, any assignment of any assignment of Satan, any plot, any schemes. Father God, anything that he has 
for their day, I cancel it. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of them, over their mind, body, soul, spirit, flesh, and heart. Do a new thing, Father God, and let us see a swift turnaround. Father, I seal this with the Holy Ghost and your power and your love. Father God, again, to you be the honor, the glory, and the praise forever and ever you are.